Okay, let's talk about the theories of leadership that you need to know for the EPPP. The Vroom yet in Jago model, Fiedler's contingency model, situational leadership theory, path goal theory, the leader member exchange or LMX theory, and transformational leadership theory. First, let's talk about Vroom yet in Jago. This theory proposes that leadership involves decision making. Leaders rate different factors as either important or non-important, and then based on these readings, there is a decision tree that Vroom Yet and Jago made that helps leaders determine which of five different strategies to use in a specific situation. The strategies range from autocratic, where the leader just makes the decisions by themselves, to democratic, where the team makes a decision together. How are you supposed to remember all this? Well, you can remember the Vroom Yet and Jago model is all about decision trees by thinking about the word Vroom like a car that gets to a fork in the road and has to make a decision. So they use the decision tree that Vroom Yet and Jago made to decide which way to go or what leadership style to use. Okay, next we have Fiedler's contingency model. According to Fiedler, there are two leadership styles. Low LPC leaders are task-oriented, and high LPC leaders are person-oriented. You can determine whether a leader is task-oriented or person-oriented by administering the least preferred coworker scale. Low LPC leaders describe their least preferred coworkers in a negative light because they do not perform well on tasks. High LPC leaders can describe their least preferred coworkers in a positive light because they can mentally separate task performance from other personal characteristics. According to Fiedler, the optimal leadership style depends on the favorableness of the situation. Low LPC leaders are most effective in very favorable or very unfavorable situations. High LPC leaders are most effective in moderately favorable situations. According to Fiedler, a leader's style stays pretty consistent, so you have to change the favorableness of the situation to match the leader's style, rather than changing the leader's leadership style. Okay, so how do you remember what Fiedler's contingency model is all about? First of all, the word contingency should remind you that the optimal leadership style is contingent upon the favorableness of the situation. And how do you remember this whole business about least preferred coworkers and the least preferred coworker scale? Well, Fiedler can remind you of a feed, like a Facebook news feed. You know how on Facebook you can identify people that you want to see less of or see more of? For example, you might have a least preferred coworker on Facebook, on your news feed, that you want to see less of. So when you think Fiedler, think news feed, and all those least preferred coworkers on your news feed. On to situational leadership theory. This theory proposes that the optimal leadership style depends on the employee's job maturity. Job maturity depends on ability and willingness to perform the job. There are four different leadership styles. Which one you should use depends on whether employees are high or low on ability and willingness to perform the job. The delegating leadership style is best for subordinates high in both ability and willingness to perform the job. Just delegate whatever you want to them. They're high in ability and they're high in motivation. In contrast, the telling leadership style is best for subordinates who are low in willingness and low in ability. You literally have to tell them what to do because they're not motivated to figure it out on their own and their abilities are low, so you have to tell them what to do step by step. The participating leadership style is best when you have employees that are low in willingness, but they're high in ability. These are those employees that are fully capable, but they're just not that motivated, so you really have to hang around them and participate or else they just won't get anything done. But it's not because they're not capable. And finally, the selling leadership style is best when you have employees that are high in willingness, but low in ability. So they're cooperative and they're motivated, but they don't really know what to do, and they're not fully convinced by your ideas and ways of doing things yet. So you have to sell them on what to do by explaining the task instructions in a persuasive manner. According to path goal theory, effective leaders help employees reach their own goals. There are four leadership styles. Directive, achievement-oriented, supportive, and participative. 
The optimal leadership style depends on the employee and the employee's task. For example, the directive style is most effective when you have an employee that's dogmatic or authoritarian and when the task is ambiguous or difficult. And the supportive style is best when you have an employee that has a high need for affiliation and low job satisfaction and when the task is easy. So to remember the path goal theory, just think about leaders helping each employee when each employee is on their own path toward their own goals. According to Leader Member Exchange Theory, or LMX, leader effectiveness and subordinate outcomes depend on the quality of interactions between the leaders and the subordinates. Leaders treat subordinates as in-group versus out-group members if they are trustworthy, competent, and engaged. In-group members have a greater say in decisions, are assigned more interesting tasks, and get more attention and support from the leaders. As a result, in-group members have higher job satisfaction, job performance, organizational commitment, and organizational citizenship. You can remember what this theory is about because LMX sounds like it could be the name of a gang. LMX. The gang leaders are going to treat people differently depending on how trustworthy they are. If they're trustworthy, they can be in the in-group and they can get assigned more interesting and challenging drug deals. And as a result, those in-group gang members are going to be more satisfied with their jobs because they're probably making a lot of money from their drug deals or whatever they're doing, and they're going to be more committed to the gang. That's the LMX theory. According to transformational leadership theory, leaders and followers each raise each other to a higher level. Transformational leaders have four characteristics. Idealized influence, which means charisma and positive role modeling. Inspirational motivation, which refers to creating and communicating a vision for the future. Intellectual stimulation, which refers to stimulating creativity and critical thinking. And individualized consideration, which is when they promote each employee's individual growth. It's easy to remember transformational leadership theory because you can just think about how leaders and their followers each raise each other to a higher level, meaning they each transform one another. So, to recap, we have the Vroom Yet and Jago model, where you come to a fork in the road and have to use the decision tree to make a decision. Fiedler's Contingency model, which has the least preferred coworker scale. The Situational Leadership model, where it depends on the situation. Maybe we'll delegate the work, maybe we'll tell the employees what to do, maybe we'll try to sell them on how we want them to do things, maybe we'll participate with them because they don't really have the motivation to work on their own. We have the path goal theory, which is all about leaders helping their subordinates reach their own goals. We have the LMX gang, LMX. which is about all those in groups and out groups. And then we have the transformational leadership theory, which is all about leaders and their subordinates helping each other transform to a higher level through idealized influence, inspirational motivation, intellectual stimulation, and individualized consideration. And that's all you need to know about the theories of leadership. If you like the idea of watching free EPPP videos, rather than having to shell out money to testing companies, hit like and subscribe. Happy studying!